this thing works and or how it doesn't work <laughs> okay anyway i didn't realize before but someone one of my patron patrons pointed out that mr five's nose fancy i'm not gonna call it anything else went straight into mr nine's mouth and i ugh, gross so he literally shot it right into his mouth when he <laughs> I hate that power. Quite a few people end up sacrificing themselves for Vivi throughout the episode. First, if it was Mr. Not, first it was Mr. Nine, and then Miss Whip Monday. I think this is important to take note of for two reasons. One, Mr. Nine and Miss Monday, despite also being part of Baroque Works and not being in on Vivi's secret at all, saw her as a friend and were willing to help her. They could have turned on her in a desperate attempt to win back their boss's trust, but they chose to support Vivi. I think this shows us, in a way, that not only are they good people, but Vivi has to be a very good person too, if they were willing to do this for her. Of course, we can't forget they tried to kill Luffy and his crew, but they thought of them as pirates. By now, we know that pirates are seen as bad guys in this world, so bad guys killing bad guys, even though we know Luffy and them aren't really bad guys, can't be judged in the same way as, a, as bad guys killing innocent people. So even though they did tr try and kill our favorite pirates, you know, these really good people, Luffy and them, they thought of them as pirates bad equals bad guys. So, yeah, I just, I just, yeah. Uh, secondly, each time someone tells Vivi to escape and they'll stall for her or distract the enemy, you can see her shaking. She seems torn between helping her friends and making sure she gets away. As the princess of Alabasta, clearly she has a big responsibility to save her kingdom. Like, she, those people sacrifice themselves for her, but she's, she's not only thinking of them, she's also thinking of her kingdom, and it, it, you can see how torn she is. Earlier in the episode, Igram earnestly says to Nami that Vivi must escape for her kingdom to survive. survive. I just thought this was really important to point out because it's not like Vivi wants to run away, but she carries a very big responsibility on her shoulders to save the kingdom of Alabasta. So in the end, she does try her best to escape with the help of her Nakama. Uh, so I'm saying Alabasta because even though the subtitles called it Arabasta, I'm pretty sure that the translators went on how, like what they hear. And I, I think some people said it's Alabasta, not Arabasta. Some people in the comments. I actually just noticed you don't only see her shaking, you also see her bite her lip uh, the whole time, which is sad considering that later she bites it so hard it starts bleeding, like she drew blood uh, after Mr. Eight. Bah! But I still, I still don't think, well, I'll get to that part. Uh, I love her determination and strength as a person. Keep it up, princess. So um, I really, really love Vivi. Uh, she's also a blue-haired character, so I'm super into blue-haired... I'm super, I'm super into blue right now. My hair keeps washing out, and I keep trying to make it blue again. But you can see, I'm very into blue. Oh, guys, look at my new little aqua figure. Isn't she fantastic? And she's blue. Uh, I added the bomb bomb fruit and the kilo kilo fruit to my list of devil fruit users. I think the exploding power is kind of cool. It's just how he uses it. Eh. I love the Kilo Kilo fruit and how Miss Valentine uses it. I think I'll edit my list so that it not only lists the devil fruit users at the devil fruit and their users, but also arranges them from my favorite to least favorite power, taking into consideration how the user uses their power. Obviously, I can't not put Luffy number one at this point. Uh, he's used it in so many great ways. Uh, next is Alvida's Sube Sube fruit. <laughs> I love that. A uh, third is Miss Valentine's Kilo Kilo fruit. Uh, Smoker is fourth with the Moku Moku fruit smoke. Buggy is fifth with Bara Bara fruit, and Mr. Five is last with the Bomb Bomb fruit. Now I'm not putting uh, Miss All Sunday on yet because I don't know what her power is. In the reaction, when Igram talks about Baroque works and their final objective being an ideal nation, I made a joke about the concept of an ideal nation sounding like the uh, Make America Great Again concept. I realized though that the real that real world politics is a very sensitive subject, and I just want to point out that I am South Africa. I'm 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 from South Africa. I am South Africa. I'm South African. I know almost nothing about American politics or world politics, so the joke was just a joke. I left it in though. Um, 
because my intention was not to offend it was just to make a joke right so i don't want to be so scared of you know making jokes and because these days on twitter i'm too scared to give my opinion on anything i'm too scared to make a joke about something even because people like they twist your words and they make you out to be this evil person and so it's, it's and so i left it in the video that joke as kind of a way to tell myself like intention matters so if it was a joke like it's okay it's okay to sometimes joke about things not everything is so serious you know twitter is becoming a really toxic place i think i understand why people why people because i used to think like i saw a lot of celebrities not celebrities but other youtubers and creators i saw them take like social media breaks and i'm like what why just ignore the hate ignore the uh, ignore the negativity it's not that easy it's not that fucking easy and I understand that now so I think a social media break is is a good thing I understand it now at this oh uh, wait where was I <laughs> okay so let's start talking about the whole Luffy versus Zoro fight thing it it starts at the end of episode 66 when Luffy finds Zoro and says you ungrateful bastard I'm gonna kick your ass at this point, I was still laughing because I thought the misunderstanding was funny and I can totally imagine Luffy giving Zoro a butt kicking if Zoro really did what Luffy thought he did. But wanting to kill him? I guess what really throws me is that Zoro tried to explain and Luffy didn't even give, give him a chance to talk. He, Zoro, also didn't fight back immediately and just kept dodging. I don't know why Luffy didn't take a moment to realize or to think like, hey, this is Zoro. He's not a bad guy. No one was killed. Maybe I should hear him out since he tried to explain the situation. At first I thought he was still drunk, but then I realized Luffy doesn't drink. So that can't be it. This also can't be because he's stupid, because it has nothing to do with stupidity. Like, yes, he can be an idiot sometimes, but I don't think this... Like, is he that stupid? This doesn't have... Like, you don't need to be smart to listen to someone's side. Even when Zoro got a second to explain his side calmly, Luffy actually calls him a liar and keeps attacking him. A liar? Zoro? About this? Did Luffy get that caught up in the stupid misunderstanding? Seriously? This just confuses me because in the past Luffy has, has moments where he gets things just by looking at a small hint. For example, Nami's pain being covered in blood in the Arlong Park arc. Yet here, the situation is explained to him clearly and calmly, and he calls Zoro a liar. Like, what the fuck? The only thing I can think of is, is this. Zoro says at, at some point, fists or swords, to find out which is stronger. Is this the only reason Oda put this in? Maybe people were sending him a lot of letters asking him who would win a fight, Zoro or Luffy, and then he decided to use this as an opportunity to make this big joke, since in the end, Nami was the one that won. Won. <laughs> I would, in a way, understand that. I would understand the joke, but in my opinion, this seems like a bad way to set up the punchline, since it feels like it completely goes against Luffy's character. I mean, like I said, I can imagine Luffy wanting to kick Zoro's butt if Zoro actually did what Luffy thought he did, but to kill him and to call him a liar after Zoro explained the situation, that, make n that makes no sense. But hey, I'm going to try and make sense of it anyway. Okay, so the two things that bother me most is Luffy saying he wants to kill Zoro and calling Zoro a liar. So he here's me trying to make sense of it. Luffy says he wants to kill Zoro. Luffy hasn't even killed an enemy at this point, not even Arlong. So there's no way he could have been serious about wanting to kill Zoro about, about this. It might just have been him exaggerating how mad he was. So that is a self-explanatory, you know, if, if, he did, if he didn't even kill someone like Arlong, would he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have been serious about that. Not really. It seems like he just got caught up in the moment and said kill for stupid... To make him, I don't know, to make him think, to make Zoro think he's serious, I don't know. Uh, but that makes sense to me. Then, calling Zoro a liar. Maybe he wanted to believe Zoro was lying because all this time, Luffy had wanted to fight Zoro just as a test of strength. He wanted to use this misunderstanding as an excuse to fight Zoro seriously because he respects his power and fighting style. We know that Luffy and Zoro see crazy strong opponents or fights as fun, in a way. Like at the end of episode 67, when they hear they'll probably be challenged by all of Baroque works. Luffy says something like, it sounds like an adventure, it sounds like fun. So maybe Luffy just wants to use this whole misunderstanding as an opportunity to challenge Zoro, 
Although I don't believe he actually planned this consciously, he's not smart enough for that. It was probably an unconscious thing. Like, you know how some people unconsciously push other people away when they are afraid of getting close or being vulnerable? So they essentially sabotage many relationships because it happens subconsciously as a means of self-protection. So like they, they want to push people away because they're scared of getting close. So they do things and say things that they, that, that they don't mean in an, in an attempt to push them away. But it, it's not a subconscious decision that you make. I mean, it's not a conscious decision that you make. It's a subconscious thing that just happens. And it, it happens easier when you're not aware of it. It's not aware that you're doing it. But the moment that you're made aware of it, you can, when you say something, you can, you can oh my gosh, why am I doing this? Why am I saying this? And, and you realize why you're doing it. It's so much easier to sort uh, to. Uh, stop doing it so that's what I mean maybe this whole opportunity to fight Zoro seriously plan was all like a subconscious thing that he he might have misunderstood the situation and really wanted to kick Zoro's ass but him taking it so seriously wanting to kill Zoro and uh, not listening to to him calling him a liar all of that might be just his subconscious mind using all of this as an opportunity to to taste that what they said uh swords versus fists now the big question who do i think would win a fight between zoro and luffy what influences my opinion on this is also something from the arlong park arc arlong when he realized how hurt zoro was looked seriously frightened of zoro he said better kill this one now while he's still severely injured or something like that with a look in his eye that i really think means he was scared of zoro he wasn't scared of Luffy, even in the final moments of the battle. He didn't look afraid at all. Luffy did beat him, however, duh. But that fear in Arlong's eye makes me feel, at, at this point at least, Zoro is stronger than Luffy. Or maybe just more skilled. I did see someone that read the notes say something like, oh, but he knew who Zoro was. He didn't know who Luffy was. But it wasn't about knowing who Zoro was because he already knew who Zoro was this whole time. It was when he saw how injured Zoro was and he was like, oh my God, this man has been fighting this way with this injury. Imagine what he could do without that injury. Luffy was going all out at Arlong and Arlong wasn't scared once. So although Luffy beat him in the end, I really think that Arlong's fear about Zoro's true strings, to me that says he's more he's more skilled. I wouldn't say necessarily stronger, but more skilled. I think Luffy would be at a disadvantage when fighting a master swordsman because obviously he can be cut. Rubber isn't resist resistance against sharp rubber isn't resistant against sharp objects. Not only that, Luffy is very reckless and Zoro is a very focused fighter, unlike Arlong. Arlong also uh, his men kept uh, holding him back because he's a, he seems to be like a reckless fighter, like Luffy and Arlong's fight, even though Arlong was also, a, a, he also has sharp uh, weapons, so Luffy was also at a dis disadvantage, Arlong was also a reckless fighter, so in the end, Luffy won because he beat him fair and square, yes, but I feel like Zoro is, is a lot more focused. I think if they were in a real fight, like they didn't know each other and met each other on the sea while Zoro was still a bounty hunter, for example, at their level right now, I have to admit that I think Zoro would beat Luffy. But that's just my guess. Anything can happen in a fight, especially a One Piece fight. And luckily, they will never have to fight to the death. Not for real, anyway. So, reading all of this makes me so sad to, that I'm gonna have to turn off comments or that I'm turning off comments because I really want to hear people's thoughts about this. Um, but at the same time, I also know that even though some people don't mean to spoil, they they take like sometimes I ask a question like this and they use like stuff that happens in the future to justify their reasoning for stuff. And I don't I know they don't always mean it, but uh, it ends up spoiling me because I'm not a stupid person. I'm not the smartest person in the world either. But I can put two and two together. So people often explain things and they think they're being all sneaky with little hints. But if 20 people give little hints, I can easily put together like information that I'm not supposed to know yet. That, that, that I'm supposed to find out in the story as it gets told. But then I end up getting spoiled. Okay, so episode 67. Deliver Princess Vivi. Luffy Pirates Depart. 
This isn't really important, just something I picked up on, but I found it strange that Nami was smart enough to be suspicious of the people of Whiskey Peak and figure out their secret and was thus able to not get tricked by them like Luffy, Sanji and Usopp. And yet she thought that an on the run princess needing their help to escape and go back home would have access to one billion belly to pay them. To me, it, sound, it seems kind of obvious if, if a princess is on the run for some reason or is masquerading as a Baroque Works agent and doing her own dirty work, essentially, there must be something really crazy going on in their kingdom and she might not have access to that much money. But I'm probably just overthinking it. When it comes to money, when it comes to money, Nami is clearly a little overambitious. Note, Alabasta is on the verge of a civil war. A civil war is a war between citizens of the same country. So that's just a note for myself. Um, and that civil war that they're on the verge of, I just want to say that uh, Baroque works. I need to put that in the notes. Baroque works is the reason for that civil war because they, I don't know what they did to, to kind of, is there's a lot of ways that a, a government or a powerful uh, political group can, um, uh, what's the word, encourage civil war amongst its citizens uh, it's it's happening in south africa right now with a lot of very strong political parties that twist facts and and use um people's ignorance to paint things in a certain way to put two groups of people against each other when in, in actual fact we're so much stronger together and we can make so much we can do so much together but by putting us against each other it helps political parties like that to stay in power and to gain more power after Vivi said Baroque Works, this popped up briefly. We do know at this point that the boss of Baroque Works is one of the Shichibukai, so technically a pirate. This must be their flag. But they only showed like a little piece of it. Like I, I can't see everything. Luffy looks like a naughty kid here and I love it. He looks so cute. Um, based on this reaction, I think Vivi didn't mean to tell them, but she was panicking and flustered and it slipped out. But maybe a part of her wanted to tell them too. I love that Vivi and Igram were honest about how dangerous this is and didn't trick them into taking her to Alabasta. Like, they didn't lie about having enough money. They didn't lie about it not being as dangerous as it is. Um, I think they're really good people. Note, an eternal post points to what... I don't know how to say that. An eternal post points to one island always. It never forgets the location of the one island it's set to. They either showed us the dummy burning because they wanted us to get an idea of how Igram died or because they wanted to divert our attention and make us think he died, but he was saved slash escaped somehow. The only person that has ever died thus far was Eric, but he was a filler character, so I don't know if Odo would actually kill a character, especially in such an obvious way, like it happening right in front of us. I'm not going to assume he's dead just yet. Like, I don't think... I've learned through watching a lot of shows, you know, if you don't see someone die, they're not necessarily dead. Like if, if that's just something I, like you can't assume things about Miss All Sunday. I think I might know who she is, just like I saw Usopp's character design and Luffy's character design and Nami's future character design, one where she has long hair uh, before watching One Piece. I think I also. Huh? I didn't say that right. I think I also have seen this person before, but I'm not sure because they don't look exactly like the image I saw in the same way that I saw Nufi's Nufi. I saw Nami's future, uh, like a picture of her. Like she had really big boobs and really long hair. And when I saw her, I was like, oh, clearly there's, there has to be a time skip at some point because, <laughs> you know, um, but I'm not sure because they don't look exactly like the image I saw. I'm, I'm just guessing that it's them. I also know their name, Nico Robin, but I don't know anything about her. I could be wrong since there is another character with dark hair that I've seen. It may be either one of these two. I'm just saying I might have seen her character before on some images. I don't think, I don't think of that as a spoiler though because it doesn't spoil the plot for me or my enjoyment in any way. Uh, it's like some spoilers are inevitable like character design these kinds of things uh these things happen and it's it's fine especially since that doesn't like knowing a name knowing what she looks like doesn't spoil plot for me i don't think so but 
I'm not sure at this point anyway, so I'm, I'm just gonna, I just wanted to let you guys know because that's, I, I like putting it out there like, I might have been spoiled on this, I know this, because then when the time comes for me to react to whatever, you guys won't be expecting, like, you'll know ahead of time what I've seen or what I know, because I'm not a great actress, so I'm not going to act like, oh, I've never seen this, who is this person? Ah, no. Luffy says for a second about Miss All Sunday, oh, she's a good guy, but a while after that he says, no, she's a bad guy, and then he, push, he pulls his cute face, or something like that. I guess it could be hinting at the fact that she may not be as evil as she appears at first, which isn't that hard to believe, to be honest, since Miss Wednesday, Miss Monday, Mr. Eight, and Mr. Nine turned out to be pretty good guys despite being Barok works workers. Like I mentioned before, it's not really fair to judge their characters as bad just because they were willing to turn in and, well, possibly kill pirates. Everyone assumes pirates are bad guys, right? Miss All Sunday gives them an eternal post. post? So so that they can avoid Little Garden, but Luffy breaks it. There's no way to know at this point if she was really trying to help them. If Little Garden is really as dangerous as she says, however, I think it's safe to assume she was trying to help them by giving them the eternal pass. Why would she steer, why would she steer them away from a dangerous island to another dangerous island? I guess I'll have to wait and see what lies ahead of them at Little Garden to determine her intent. I'm not sure if it's worth taking note of, but the eternal pass that Luffy broke was going to take them to Nan Nanimonai Island. Nanimonai sounds like Nanimonai sounds like Nandemonai, which is Japanese for nothing. So that's probably Oda's way of saying that the island is not important. Haha, <laughs> I'm kidding. Who knows? Maybe it is. So maybe because uh, because now that the eternal pass is broken for that island. Would they ever go there? And should we be curious about it? Or is it just like, is it just like Oda's way of hinting and saying like, that's not really an important island. What was important here was her giving them the option to go somewhere safe, but they chose, like Luffy chose to not take her help or not let someone else decide the direction of their ship. Note, I've decided to turn off comments on YouTube videos for One Piece for two reasons. So this is where I should put the timestamp for people that don't want to listen to the review, but they do want to understand why comments are turned off. One, people spoil a lot, even when they don't think they are, like answering my rhetorical questions. For example, I say, I didn't know there would be towns in the Grand Line. Oh my gosh, I thought it was really hard to get in there. And then people come in explaining how the Grand Line works, telling me there are lots of towns, people are born there, there are even marine officers slash stations. These are things I'd like to figure out for myself as the story progresses, not have them spelled out to me uh, in the comments. Secondly, I'm too afraid to even share my opinion about things I don't like at this point because people are incessantly irritating when it comes to an opinion that is different from their own. If I say, for example, I don't like that Nami did that, people immediately take it as this bitch hates Nami, let me tell her a thing or two. And then they go on to explain um, why my opinion is invalid and why Nami is such a great character and why they love Nami and why I should love Nami. And you know, it's fine when one or two people do that, but when I, like 60 to 100 people comment the same thing and, and they literally feel seem to be offended by the fact that I didn't like something Nami did. It wasn't even, I didn't even say Nami. I just said, I don't like this part that she does. I don't like this thing that she does. And like, it's like they take my words out of context. Like I said, like there's times when I, I don't like when Nami hurts the others. Like there's times when it's funny and it's deserved. Like when uh, they broke the eternal post that uh, Crocus gave them. Like, yeah, you just, they, they deserved a hit over the head for that. But there's times when it just, it gets, it's annoying. It's not, that's not funny anymore. And then people, oh, they take it so out of context and they're like, I'm so, I'm so biased. And like, what about when Sanji hits them? I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, because with Sanji, it's like four out of, it's like four times. But with Nami, it's like 11 times and it gets old and like, okay, really was that necessary? So it's just like something she d does is not necessarily Nami. But now the people, 60 people kind of like, it does feel at some point like they attack you if it's 60 people telling you like 
you're being biased and it's invalid and and you can't say that you don't know her you don't, ugh. and then it, it, it reflects negatively oops sorry and then it reflects negatively on the character and now i can't i don't like these are all like 60 people commenting i don't even know your names it's just it feels like it's bombarding and then instead i can't be mad at 60 people so i just re i just reflect or or uh, what's the word project that frustration onto the character and it makes me whereas i only disliked two things she does now i feel like i don't like her like i was totally warming up to her i was just explaining like oh i don't like that or i don't like that now the way that people re re react to me saying like oh this is my honest opinion it just makes it like i, I feel like when i don't like something I'd, I'd rather just be quiet about it and and you know, not be honest because I'm not in the mood to hear people say your opinion is unjustified. Like, no, that's an it's an opinion, and I I justify it by explaining why I feel that way. But but feelings, like feelings aren't facts. Oda knows there will like there's people that like Sanji and people that don't like Sanji. Oda knew like th that's why there are so many characters. You're not going to like all of them. They're not meant to be all liked and loved. So anyway, I don't really think there's a big problem with turning off comments because I do spend uh, a lot of time on Discord and a lot of time on Patreon. And uh, my last Patreon video had, well, my last One Piece post on Patreon had like 67 comments or 76 comments or something. I, I don't remember. Um, and I'd rather take time to read through and reply to all those comments uh, knowing that you know people on patreon they're less likely to spoil and also um how patreon works is let me show you so i get emails of all my patreon oh, fuck. all my patreon comments and stuff so the newest one will always be at the top and i go through them from top to bottom so i see nine out of ten times i see a comment a commenter telling an, if another commenter spoiled something i read the person's comment that says hey this is a spoiler please delete it i read that first and then i know what who's or whose comment not to read so the chances of being spo me being spoiled on patreon is like almost zero and then on discord where all of you can join it's free to join the discord uh there it's like i like you can tag me but there's everyone's there so everyone can watch out for me and tell me don't read that comment or someone can tell a mod please delete that comment it's a spoiler like it's just so much safer for me and and i feel like it's fair for me to turn off the comments because i'm not taking away your opportunity to say something you can say something to me on discord which is free or you can say something to me on patreon uh, which is just for level two, you get all my full reactions for one piece. It's just three dollars a month. But if you can't afford three dollars a month, there's Discord. It's hundred percent free. So I'm not taking away anyone's right to say anything. I'm just keeping myself safe. So uh, you guys can check out the notes. The link will be in the description. I will be posting my favorite Patreon comments uh, at the end of at the end of each video like let's say i reacted to episode 66 and 67 um i post that to patreon and then the comments on that video i'll post at the end of of the notes each time so if you want to go read some of my favorite comments but for now i'm going to end the video so that i can edit in the review with the highlights and upload it as soon as possible thank you all so much for understanding and uh yeah i hope that eventually i can turn back i can turn the comments on again i'm hoping that maybe uh this discourages some people from watching me all together maybe it pisses them off enough <laughs> and it will just limit the amount of spoilers or people that are spoilers it, it, maybe some of them will just leave um and in the future that will help my my mods because you know they don't get paid i can't pay them at this point to spend time every day going combing through so many comments looking for people that spoil me uh so really this just makes things easier for everyone Anyway, I'm sorry for the long notes. Uh, well, not really sorry. I hope that you enjoyed them. I will be posting my episode 68 and 69 full reactions to Patreon tonight. And the video should be up on Sunday night for YouTube. See you guys then.
Bye.